Well, as we come on the air this afternoon, after that CBS News special report, the U.S. Supreme Court hands down a major decision regarding affirmative action, striking it down. Now, you just heard from President Biden and his remarks on the decision. We want to thank you for joining us today at noon. I'm Journey Taylor. Now, right now, we go straight to Natalie Brand in Washington, D.C., with what this decision means for universities going forward. The Supreme Court struck a blow to affirmative action at colleges and universities across the country, ruling it unlawful in the admissions process. Writing for the court's majority, Chief Justice John Roberts said that Harvard and the University of North Carolina's race-conscious admissions programs violate the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Lawsuits against the schools allege the policies discriminated against white and Asian American applicants. Today, the court said the way to end racial discrimination is to stop taking race into account. In her dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor wrote the decision rolls back decades of precedent and momentous progress. And in a separate dissent, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, the court's first black female justice, called the decision a tragedy for us all. Universities who have been bracing for this decision have begun thinking of alternative ways to increase diversity on campus. So we might see colleges and universities put more weight, for instance, on um, where did you grow up? Do your parents have graduate degrees? What zip code did you grow up in? The Supreme Court upheld using race as a factor in college admissions programs as recently as 2016, but that was before the court's makeup moved sharply to the right with a 6-3 conservative majority. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court still has more big rulings to come this term, including President Biden's student loan forgiveness program to erase or reduce debt for tens of millions of Americans. The high court is also considering another case concerning whether a Colorado wedding website designer can deny services to same sex couples. The heat has killed at least 14 people so far, and the smoke is blanketing big cities from the Midwest to the East Coast. Badly, Blackburn has the latest from New York. Seconds after delivering a pile of packages to a home in Cypress, Texas, this Amazon delivery driver nearly collapsed from excessive heat exhaustion. Oh. Wednesday, parts of Texas were hotter than 99% of the planet. In Dallas, the temperature inside Norman Grant's home climbed past 104 degrees before a donated air conditioner could be installed. Sweating like crazy. More than 62 million Americans are now under excessive heat watches, warnings, and advisories, trapped inside a heat dome covering the southeast. Roddy Fonstock spends his days on roofs in New Orleans installing commercial air conditioners. It's hot enough to feel the soles of my shoes hot. Undershirt, 15 minutes, it's gone. The Midwest and Northeast are not faring much better. Smoke from ongoing Canadian wildfires is blanketing big cities like Washington, D.C., Chicago, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo, New York. All of New York State is now under an air quality alert, and here in New York City, forecasters expect the smoke to be a problem on and off for several weeks. Residents are being urged to stay inside as much as possible and wear masks when they go out. My eyes have been watering, my throat has been sore, I've been coughing. And weather woes have stretched westward. This weekend, California is forecast for its first major heat wave of the year. And the National Weather Service is warning that dry, hot, windy conditions could lead to dangerous fires in the southwest. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. With the dangerously hot temperatures, the last thing you want to be dealing with is unclean water. Some people were worried that might be the case after seeing some discoloration, but Central Arkansas Water says it's still safe. After investigating, CAW found that the levels of manganese in Lake Maumel has risen and entered the treatment plant. That's causing the water to have a slight yellowish tint. The state's water utility is working on a fix, but in the meantime, they say the water is still safe to drink, even if discolored, but beware, washing clothes may lead to stains. Here at home this summer, you're going to see a handful of new laws going into effect from new school restrictions, bathroom bills, and gun changes. 
Lawmakers passed 890 new acts during the most recent general session, with most of them starting on July 31st. Now, we've talked about some of them recently, like Act 300, well, 372, which allows for changes to how public library books can be challenged and potentially punishes librarians if they contain material harmful for kids. That act is currently being challenged in federal court. You can head to our website at thv11.com and search Arkansas laws and it will pop right up. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said that more needs to be done to slow down inflation and that he wouldn't rule out back to back rate hikes in the coming months. The central bank paused interest rate increases earlier in June. And just as Americans are packing for their 4th of July vacations, severe weather has thrown the airline industry into chaos. In the last few days, thousands of more flights were canceled or delayed, and those numbers keep going up. With the 4th of July right around the corner, this will be a busy time and busy weekend at airports. THB 11's Ashley Godwin is at the Little Rock Airport to see what you need to know before leaving. As 4th of July weekend approaches, there's a lot more people heading to the airport, so you need to make sure you get there early so you don't miss your plane. Two hours. I always do two hours. I always expect to be a little later than anticipated, yeah. TSA estimates 30,000 people will fly out of the Little Rock Airport this holiday. With that comes longer lines and wait times. Miami was, it was slow getting through TSA. Very slow. It took us about an hour and a half. A little bit of a warning here. If you come into the airport with less than an hour before your flight, there's a chance you may miss it. Passengers telling us getting through Little Rock's airport hasn't been the problem. Today was not bad, no. But in other places, severe storms this week forced airlines to delay more than 30,000 flights and cancel nearly 7,000 more. That's still the biggest area that we're having a problem with is making sure that passengers get here on time. It is recommended you arrive at the airport at least two hours before your flight leaves to make sure you get through security checkpoints. Be prepared, know what you can and cannot bring in your checked bag or in your carry on. Now there have been some reported delays at the Little Rock Airport in the past couple weeks, so make sure you check with your airline to make sure your flight is on time. In Little Rock, Ashley Godwin, THV 11 News. And summer travel is underway and criminals see that as an opportunity to rip people off. Travel fraud is one of the biggest money makers for criminals and they often start with an old scheme luring you in with a free vacation. Many of these fake offers are light on details and the promoter often rushes you to make a quick decision. Look for the red flags, like when someone is asking you to pay by wire transfer, gift card, or crypto. If you're planning an overseas trip, you may see sites offering to help with an international travel visa, passport, or other documents. They often charge high fees and are just copycats of the Department of State's website. Avoid the fees by going directly to travel.state.gov. Now, Jill also says if you fall victim to a travel scam, report it immediately to the Federal Trade Commission at reportfraud.ftc.gov. Well, I don't know about you, but I like to try new foods. I love popcorn, but how about new snacks like marshmallows in a can or strangely enough, upcycled food waste? Well, at 1217, we'll share the latest food trends that could be headed to store shelves near you. But first, let's also talk food closer to home. We're taking you inside a restaurant that seems to have limitless options and more on just food. And more than just food. There we go. Scott Cover steps in to tell us more about weather as well. Yeah, we're looking live outside from RV 11, looking off towards the east under a mostly clear sky. That sunshine is just baking the natural state here at the noon hour. In fact, we're on track for today to be one of the hottest days of the year so far. Relief is in the seven day forecast that's coming up.